Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Lunasipal G and this time I'm going to talk about the update that Dauntless got. The update is called Ostigar Justice and is the update 1.7.3. Now this brought a lot of changes to repeaters, namely they put away everything that was modular by repeaters, so repeaters now are built just like any other weapon in Dauntless. Which means you have to gather the materials, if you don't have them you have to gather the materials, fight the behemoths and then build the weapon. Now I already had all the materials that I needed, thank god, but I did have to use a lot of ramps to build the weapons. And you need to build the weapons because even if you build the ones that I was just only going to build, which is the one that comes from escalation, you still need the other ones, you know, to do that coupling thing, you know, when you have to select one of the terror or fire weapons of the previous behemoths to a couple with that one so i ended up spending all my ram so you know that was a little bit of a bummer repeaters also got a buff for the majority of them except the one that i used the most which is which is twin suns which is the one i i enjoy the most actually they also changed the camera angle but i didn't see a really big change there when i was playing maybe the the camera the, the camera was shifting Two angles, maybe. Uh, maybe I just need to put something new in options that I didn't really look at it. But yeah, it didn't feel like that it was that different from the previous way I played repeaters, and they didn't really feel strong. I mean, they got buff, but they didn't really feel strong. Although, of course, in the footage, I'm using this on the last island where the humans are stronger, so that could be it. Now, also concerning the update, let me talk about the Hunt Pass. The Hunt Pass has the similar structure as before. If you pay for the Hunt Pass, you have a new armor. If you don't pay, the free part only gives you rams. It gives a little bit of, of merits, also combat and explosion merits, and a little bit of platinum. It is very empty. I've seen that the free Hunt Pass is being let go more and more, and they are really focusing on the paid pass, the paid season pass. But I really don't see anything good there. I mean, it's just cosmetics, of course. But I want to see something that I'm going to Okay, yeah, this is good. I'm going to get this one. But, and I don't. I just look at, at the armor at the end. And I was like, I feel so, you know, so bulky, so triangular. It doesn't feel like cool. It doesn't feel cool to me. So, yeah, I've been waiting for the hunt pass so I can spend all the platinum that I had on it. But, yeah, I have not seen anything really cool in the past, I don't know, three, four four, five seasons, and this was no different. So yeah, I still keep my life to myself and, and spend it more on slots. Slots that now you can buy individually and they increase the, the number of slots that you can have to 20. So that that's cool, that's a good change. Now in the reward cache, you also get a new armor. This armor is like the light version of the one you can get in the pass. And you know, because I had a lot of coins, I decided, okay, I'm gonna buy this one. I didn't like the helmet, so I didn't get the helmet. Uh, they also did a thing, this thing that where they put some of the skins of weapons in the early old pass. I think it was chain blades and Repeaters that was changed, it was switched between the two passes. I don't know why they did that. It, 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 it was a little bit of confusion that, you know, you know, is this hunt pass going to be bigger? Is this going to be smaller? I think they did a little bit to entice the collector part of players that, you know, they want to get everything. So they want to get the, the earlier skins, then go like, okay, I got all the skins. Uh, I didn't get the skins for the weapon that had the um, bandages or the ribbons. I I don't really like that part. I don't really like the, the aesthetic of that. But I did get the other ones. I did get the, um, the you know the green metallic ones, and I don't particularly like the axe skin. I think it looks like too much like a shovel. But because you know, it's a set. <laughs> I decided to get the set of the whole the weapons, and I got the armor, which I like to use without the helmet. Now, for the new stuff and quests that you can do in the game. Uh, Gregario will give you a little small quest, a small task to do, which is to collect all the, I think they are called the Aether Sprouts. Phoenix Labs has made the decision that now there was gonna, just going to be Aether Sprouts. They're gonna, not going to change the aesthetic of the gatherable in Ramsgate. They're just going to put 
uh, ether spots every time because maybe it was too time consuming, maybe too much of a hassle to always change the the aesthetic look of the thing that you were collecting, Ramsey. So from now on, it will be this one. At least that's what I said. From now on, it will just going to be this one. But we never know. They might change something, I don't know, for Christmas or for Easter or something, or some event or Halloween or some event like that. But for now, this is how it is and it will remain this way uh, from here on. Um, the quest is very simple, it's just to gather 10 sprouts, which is easily done in one go, and then he'll give you a small reward. That's it. That's, a, that's the quest right there. Then you go to Admiral Zai, and Admiral Zai has a number of quests. As I, as I think he has three quests at least. Uh, the first one is to for you to just to forge repeaters. You can you can you can you could forge all of them like I did, but you can forge just one, and the quest will be uh, concluded, completed. Uh, then he says for you to do to ten times of damage, ten k damage to behemoths with. Whatever repeater you like. Uh, to do this, I went to Blizzworks, which was my first time there. I'll talk about it a, a little bit ahead. And it wasn't a good decision because, uh, again, Twin Suns were not cutting it. But I did manage to do the 10k. But I didn't really feel any difference between the repeaters, the way I was playing with the repeaters now and before. I felt they were just the same. After you've done that, Yudal Morzai will then give you Forge in Fury, which Basically, is you need to find the five discoveries that are in the new island of Placeworks. Uh, they are very easy to find. The island is similar to one we had before, which I can't remember the name, but it's pretty interesting. Pretty, you know, it also helps you to explore the island a little bit more for the first time. But it's they're all really easy to to find. I didn't even knew I found them all. I thought I missed one, and when I got to him, I. He just said, okay, you completed the task, and I was like, oh, okay. And that's it. It's just a, a simple exploration task, which I like to do. After you complete the um, quest Forge in Fury, uh, Admiral Zai will give you the Blazework Reconnaissance Report. And this report has a little bit more lore in it for you to um, add to the library. And there's a little thing at the end that I caught my attention. Uh, the report goes to three people. Um, the ca to Kathleen Sorel, to Arkham Drew, and to Colonel Radomir. And Colonel Radomir has not appeared in the game at all. He hasn't even been mentioned, I think. So maybe he'll appear later when we get to fight the Behemoth on Blazeworks. I don't know, but I was interested to see that a new character is going to be introduced, a new NPC probably is going to be introduced in the future. Remember that to forge repeaters, you need to open the Slayer's Path and open up those nodes. Those nodes, I think it will take combat points, so exploration points. There's also a new mod for repeaters that I unlocked. I haven't tried it yet. I think it's, to a, uh, it's tuned to a particular repeater that I haven't used yet. But yeah, you got that. You have to use that steel path to that. You also have to use the steel path to open the crafting of the new Omnicell, which is called Tempest. The Omnicell Tempest can be crafted then at the middleman, and the Omnicell will grant you attack and movement speed. Uh, each time you dodge an attack, it will increase uh, a stack, and that stack will give you more movement and um, attack speed. Uh, you can also spend one by pressing, by using the, the lantern. You just press one, and it does a small dash, a small electric dash, either towards the behemoth or towards the sides, and it does a little bit of electro damage. Think of it like the, um, like a, a light version or a small version of the, um, you know, electric escalation weapons, the the legendary ability that they have. I used it with repeaters, but it really doesn't bring anything new or special to the use of repeaters. But then when I use it with the uh, hammers, there I can see the difference. There, it's really cool. The, the hammer almost feels like it was before. You know, when Wild Frenzy at half health was really fast and then you can also use your potions to make it fast it almost feels at the same speed although it's not you know it's it's the it, it, that, that thing got nerfed really heavily and it's not up to that level it's close it's it's doable it works it's fast but it's not you know as fast as before now finally last but not least blazework islands blazework islands is really interesting it's like a, a military bunker style island with all its little secrets around 
as soon as we get there we realize that they also made a new change which is now you can see the behemoths on the island or even if you go alone you don't need to put up a flare or to go near them to see what they are you can immediately see for instance if you're hunting a, a particular behemoth as soon as you enter the island you can always already see if he's there or not it's really a lot faster than just having to run around the whole island trying to find them it is also the first time that the environment is actually used in combat there are those red barrels lying around everywhere and if you shoot them or hit them they explode and they do damage to the behemoth but remember they also do damage to you so use caution with repeaters it's really cool because you can be at a distance just blowing up barrels if you're using swords or or strikers or any other form of the lee uh it's a little bit more complicated you need to be aware because sometimes you're hitting them and he's on top of the barrel and you can see the barrel the barrel explodes and it can take you damage and on that l everything is tough and everything will hurt you <laughs> so you be aware Another thing that the island has of interesting is it has this big vent, which is probably the arena where you're going to fight the behemoth. The next behemoth they already said is some kind of fire shrike or shroud or fire shrike or shrike. So I'm thinking, you know, by the name it's a phoenix, it'll be probably in the arena. But what I really got into is that around the arena there are three other small vents. You can see through the, through, through the grid that there is a aether vent underneath so it's either to get out of the arena or maybe when you go in you can then go through there and maybe solve some puzzle i don't know but it's interesting to see they haven't said exactly how it's going to work but you can see that in the near future these things will all work together maybe you'll have to gather some kind of um, material some kind of resources to activate it like you do with the carnivore maybe it'll be some kind of puzzle that you have to complete with your friends uh, although they always try to, pay, to put every part of the game playable as solo so this will probably be one too but i'm interested to see how this is going to work and it looks amazing the island looks amazing it's really cool to see the shift from islands of just pure nature to this more uh, mechanical and factory looking island i would like to see maybe an island with just city and factory that'll be cool too so yeah although i'm happy with it so i'm glad that uh, with everything i i've played i did detect two problems the first problem was that the other fountains where you you know get your health back don't always have the blue smoke or the blue flames there although they are they do have health there so sometimes i pass through them and said oh somebody probably already drank all the all the health out of it but no they were still active but the the visual side of it was not active maybe it has something to do with the reset when they reset the fountain i don't know the skin is not there it's not loading correctly so that's the problem and the other problem is that the danger meter on the island goes up really really fast it happened to me at least two times where i was fighting the behemoth oh well one of them i was dying a lot so we won't count that one but another one i wasn't dying was just doing a lot of damage to him but the danger meter went up so fast i don't know i don't know if it started uh, at zero or if it was very red when i got there because they say the danger meter now uh, goes up automatically i don't think you have to be uh, really be engaged with the behemoth to do the meter go up so when you get there if the meter is like 80 percent you got only 20 percent of meter left to kill him so i don't know if that's the problem but the thing is at least two times the behemoths fled without me being able to kill them i think the danger meter is going up too fast i know it's the last island it's the toughest island but i think I think they need to balance this a little bit better because uh, we don't have time to kill the behemoth. And I was using a hammer at level 19 uh, and he just fled. Then I was with another player and we were doing the event, the, the blaze event that appears on the island. And both behemoths were in red, both behemoths were the Digimeter flashing and they didn't leave. They didn't disappear and I was like, I don't know why this happened, there's something here that needs to be tweaking. But yeah, I only noticed those two problems. All in all, it's a good update. It is a good update. What got me most interested was actually the lore of the island. You know, how are we going to behemoth? What's going to be the behemoth? How are we going to fight it? What's the conspiracy behind? Because we've been hearing about this this group of military or paramilitary from Admiral Zaid's side for a long time. Are they our enemy? Are they going to be the antagonists in this in this universe? You know, we have Garam Ramsgate and then you have this super industrial faction that tries to destroys i mean yeah there's a lot of things to explore here and i i'm happy with what we got 
I'm not really saying that, oh my god, I really want to just, just jump right back in and play every day, but at least it got me uh, interested enough to keep playing, to keep playing, that's what I want to say. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, please like and subscribe, and as always, have a great game, guys.